Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bonsai Crazy. Today we're going to be looking at two shop bought ficus trees. We're going to be doing a, a trunk chop and a partial repot on one and an air layer on the other. So we're going to be working on these two shop bought trees from Ikea and the other from B&Q. Both are ficus ginseng and grafted branches of fi ficus benjamina. So the tools we're going to be using today, a nice clean sharp pair of scissors, a nice clean sharp pair of concave cutters, two different styles of carving knives, nice and sharp and clean. Two different styles of chopsticks, one blunter than the other. Some cut paste, rooting powder, a spray bottle with water in, a pot and a brush, an Ikea bag or a plastic bag, or you could even use cling film. And the other thing we're going to need today is some sphagnum moss that's been soaking in some water. Now, the first tree we're going to be working on today is this shop bought IKEA tree. It has these roots that to me look like fingers and I'm, I really don't like them. Uh, it's not something that pleases me. Um, and they're only done for one reason. And that's because the ginseng is a lot faster growing tree than the Benjamima that is at the top. So we're going to be air layering this tree. Because I like the movement of the top half and I don't like the fingers. So as you can see, the ginseng has started growing little shoots out of the trunk part that we're going to be doing the air layer on. So we're just going to take them away. So when we're doing an air layer, we first need to assess where we want the roots to start sprouting out from. And for me, it's just above this, this little nodule here. So the first cut is going to be around here. And you want to make it as straight as you possibly can. And you want to go all the way around the trunk. So the general rule of doing an air layering is the width of the trunk should be the width of the next line or the next cut that you make. Now I have to be quite careful because the roots up here are quite high. So what I am going to do is I'm going to take it from as low as I can on this root system here. As you can see, I've actually gone straight through this bit of root here because we do want to make sure that the tree can't bridge the gap between the first cut and the second cut. So once you've made your first cuts, you then want to strike a line from the top cut to the bottom, bottom cut, like so. Bearing in mind, the top cut is the most important cut. We can then start peeling back the bark. So it's very important that you get all the cambian, cambian layer off so the tree doesn't reconnect itself. And what this does is it tells the top part of the tree that there's something wrong and it should be sending out some roots around here. 
which hopefully that's what will happen. So now I'm just going to spray the top part, just to get the top part a little bit damp. So while that's drying, you can put a little bit of rooting powder in a pot so as not to cross contaminate. Ficus tree sap is actually poisonous. And if you do end up cutting yourself whilst you're performing this operation, then please do take care as to put a plaster on your finger. And please do take care around your animals as eating the leaves or eating the bark of the tree can poison them. So please be very careful around your pets. So next we simply dab on our rooting powder. Now we don't want too much and it's not necessary to go underneath the line because the roots aren't necessarily going to come out from there. Now we don't want to overdo it but we want to make sure that we've got every area. So next we're simply going to take our Arkea bag we're going to cut the top off and then you're going to cut down each side like so. Open up the bag and turn it over and what I like to do is I like to get a bit of brown tape, half put it on the bag and half not at the bottom where you know the bottom of the soil is going to be. Turn it back over and then you can put your sphagnum moss in the centre and then you're all ready to put it on. So now comes the tricky part. We grab our bag of sphagnum moss and we wrap it around. Now this is the tricky part, like I say, is if you've got a big area to do, then it can be quite, quite hard at times. You want to make sure it's all covered with sphagnum moss. Once you have it there, We can then just simply use that tape to come back round on the bag to hold the bag there so we can then play about with it open it up slightly and put some more sphagnum moss in there and make sure it's completely full so now we just simply take some wire and put the wire around the bottom and slowly tighten. Now you don't want to over tighten because you don't want to strangle the tree, but we do want to make sure it's fairly tight. Now ordinarily, I would do the same with the top, but the way the branches are and the way the sphagnum moss is sitting, I don't necessarily need to do that. So I've just wrapped the, the rest of the bag around the top and that is holding it nice and secure and firm in place at the top there like so so there's the air layer done i would advise that you keep an eye on this every week make sure there's enough moisture in there and in about two or three months time i strongly suspect that we'll have some really decent roots there and we'll be have, able to take the whole top off in about three months time so the second tree we're going to be working on today is the tree I've got from B&Q. Now I do love this one. It's got an amazing trunk system going on. I just don't like the height of it and I don't like the snake-like movement on the tree. So if I could chop this away for you to see, it's got some lovely movement going up here. Um, but I actually want to keep these branches, these grafted branches, because later on down the line, once I've grown the trunk and I've grown 
growing the chunk in the area that I want, I want to then graft these back onto the, the main part of the trunk and make the composition. So these for now are gonna stay. I'm actually gonna chop the trunk around this mark here. To do that today, because of the way the branches are sitting, I'm actually gonna use a hacksaw today because this will give me enough room to make the chop and not damage any of the branches. So we're just simply just gonna get the hacksaw in as close as we can. So you can see straight away what a difference that has actually made. If I had room in the house, what I could have done was air layer this like I just showed you on the other one, or taken some cuttings from these branches, put them in some rooting hormone and put them in a, a soil of your choice. And within no time at all, you'll have lots and lots of ficus trees growing. But I simply don't have the room. So I, I've elected for a trunk chop and to discard it today. So next I'm just gonna get the concave cutters and just nip away at this here. It's quite a big trunk chop that I've done. So I just wanna make sure that it's gonna heal nicely. So the next thing we're gonna to do today is we're gonna take a look at the root system on this. I'm just gonna try and coax it out of the pot because I really wanna get a good look and see what's going on. So, a little bit damp, but I did give it a good watering yesterday. But we've got some very good roots growing and they are, they are definitely growing because they're all nice and white. Oh, there's a little animal we don't want in there. That's a worm. So I'm just gonna take some of the mud away. What happened is I slip potted this um, when I first got it. I took it out and I gave it a little bit of extra soil because it wasn't too great. We've definitely got some worms in there. So when you're doing your root work, it's important to remember to come out in a radial pattern outwardly so that you don't damage too many of the roots and you'll get a nice nabari at the end of it. So there you go, that's about as much as I'm going to take off. I've just reduced the soil mass uh, by about a quarter or a half, not even that. Um, that's going to build me up for the future so I can get rid of all of this soil eventually. So next we're just going to, I've filled up the bottom with the soil, the bonsai soil I'm going to use. We're just going to put it back in the pot. Because eventually I would like this tree to sit in this pot here. Or something similar to this pot here. So, which I think is would be quite a nice fit. Maybe I'll get one a tiny bit deeper. Um, but I do think that would be a, quite a nice marriage between the two. I think I want that sitting a slightly bit prouder. So give it a good wiggle. Now's the time to have a good look and see if we want a slight change in angle of the composition. Because if we're going to be growing on the branches, we want it sitting roughly where we'd like the composition to be viewed from. So... I'm just going to play around with this slight angle of this tree. Because I do think a little bit of a lean on this one may, may suit it a bit more. 
and that's it i quite like that angle there like so so next we're just going to fill the fill the tree with the soil now making sure we use our chopsticks to poke any hair air holes out air holes are not good for the tree and will only cause ill health of the tree over time you do this correctly So the last thing we need to do today is simply put some cut paste on our cut up the top. Now this is not always necessary with a ficus tree. If you have small branches, then they do heal very quickly through their sap. But as this is such a big cut, I am going to treat it with a little bit of cut paste just to ensure the healing of the of the tree. So there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode of uh, ficus root work, trunk chop and air layering. Um, I really have high hopes for this one for the future. Likewise, the other one. Um, I hope to get that into a really nice pot eventually. So please check in in a couple of months and see how this air layer is doing and I'll catch you all next time, guys. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you later. Ta-da.